Boo. If we have to let the winner league go, I don't want to let you go. I don't want to either. A Christmas dance reunion premieres Friday, December 3rd at 8. Part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our third panel for today. Um, I would like to introduce Monique Colvin and Corbin Blue of this year's A Christmas Dance Reunion. We're going to go ahead and get the questions started. Um, Nola has the first question. Nola? Hello. It is so great to be here with you guys. By the way, you look fabulous and happy holidays to both of you. My first question is to you, Corbin. We see two high school dance partners get back together for the holidays. So many fans from High School Musical, including myself, will watch this and think this is the perfect holiday storyline for the two of you as you both have worked together on the Disney Network in High School Musical. But how does it, you know, how does this holiday story throw us back to some of the High School Musical memories? Because I did see a photo when I streamed of you and Monique and it was, you know, back during, I think, in the gym of High School Musical. I was like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. <laughs> Honestly, getting to work on this project settled so many dreams coming true. <laughs> uh, at this time, I mean, it was uh, October of 2020 when we went out to go shoot. So coming on the tail end, uh, you know, of, of a quarantine and, and not working for a period of time. And then, you know, it was also election time. There was a lot of, you know, just a lot of chaos in, in the world and in, and in our minds. And all of a sudden, we go on this journey to go to Canada, get out of the US for a minute, uh, and we get to reunite in this film that we haven't been on screen together in 13 years. And when I tell you every single moment on set was just comfort. Uh, and there are, there are a lot of moments in the film that I, I watched when I watched it, I'm looking at just how easy the, the romance comes and how easy the, the connection uh, came. And that was, that was real. I mean, it, it just, it's, it, it, it truly is such a, a beautiful, wonderful thing to be able to work with a person that you, you, you love from the bottom of your heart. I'm I know, Mo, I love you. You're like, you're, you're, I know. You're my I'm like, oh my God. It, <laughs> like there was just so there, I, I honestly, I could go on and on so much because then on top of it, my wife is, uh, Sasha Clements is also uh, another lead part in the film. So there was like all of this just love, just, just this love fest uh, on, on camera and, and on set. Now, Monique, uh, you know, just speaking of High School Musical, there was a lot of dance that would go on in the show because it was a musical. There was, you know, a lot of dance routines that would happen. Um, I yeah. really think dance brings us together, and I think that definitely shows in this holiday movie. So lastly, you know, how was the process of nailing down a dance routine with Corbin Blue when you guys got to reprise and, you know, really just do this again, just yeah. to dance together? I think Corbin really said it well. I think the, be the, the thing is that we were safe, you know? We felt like we were safe, we were comfortable. And that is such an important part of telling any story is making sure that, um, that you have that connection. But another thing that I think is really interesting is Corbin started dancing when he was two or three years old. I started dancing when I was in fourth grade. And something that's really interesting is that we, it didn't, our lives didn't begin with High School Musical. Obviously that is a, an amazing part of our journey and it's a peak and we're so, we will always be so proud of it and excited to talk about it and share. But what I thought was really interesting was that this story to me brought the two of us back further than where we were when High School Musical started. It brought us back to the roots of who we are. And it reminded me that I danced as a kid and there, this moment didn't make it in the movie, but uh, there are photos in the hallway of my, of my fictional house that are pictures of me when I was 10, 12, 15, 17 years old, be, you know, with these big dreams in my mind. And to see that, and then to actually see photos of us from when we were on tour, one of, the, one of the photos is actually from the Macy's Day Parade. And I remember that so distinctly. And I remember how I felt in that moment. And then to fast forward today and to be able to bring all of who we are together and for that to be on screen, I think it absolutely captures the magic that you all felt when you saw High School Musical. But I also think that this movie is gonna do something really special and allow you to get to know Corbin and I in a way that you probably 
honestly haven't seen prior to now, which is really like who we've always been. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Noah. All right, up next, I have Mike from TV America. Mike? I'm gonna give him a moment. There okay, he is. Can, you, can you hear me now? We can. Can you hear me okay now? Hi, Mike. Okay, good deal. Hey, uh, Corbin, I wanted to ask you to con continue on what Mo was saying a minute ago, because we have a lot of movies that are about mute singing, not as many movies that are based on dance. Mm -hmm. And dance has been so much a part of your life forever. I mean, talk about starting to dance when you're two or three years old. Talk about what it was like as a kid and, and how much of it, how important it is to be able to get back to a, a, a kind of a dance-based show like this sometimes. Well, again, it, this movie is a lot of art mimics life and, and vice versa. Uh, there's a lot of meta moments. Uh, I, I started dancing when I was about two years old and I, I started with, with tap and ballet. And that was always my first love. And I, and, I, and, I, and I, you know, started acting early as well. And I started singing early as well. But dance was just always my form of expression. And to this day, it's just the one thing that just comes naturally, just comes easy. Um, if there's ever, you know, there are times where people just, they just want to sing and they just, it just needs to come out of them. And, and my body just expresses it through, through dance. Um, and when I tell you the character, the, both of, both of them, both of the characters are, are just so rooted in realism. Um, you know, they both found this joy and this love of dance at an early age. Uh, my character, Barrett, actually continued on with it and, and went on to become a, a Broadway stage performer, very much like, like real life. And, and Monique's character goes on to actually become a lawyer. And dance is still this, this joy, this love that's just hanging in right behind her that she's just you know, wanting to, to turn back and, and, and find again. And I know, I don't, you know, to, to speak for Mo a little bit here, I know that, you know, she has gone on to do just such incredible, serious, wonderful things uh, in this world. I mean, she's, she's, a, she's a UN ambassador. <laughs> um, so she, she um, you know, there is, again, there, there, I know, I know getting, get it, for me, getting to dance with her and her getting a chance to also refine a, a joy of dance and, 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 and that, that love in this, it, it was incredible. And I gotta also do one more shout out uh, to, to our, our director and our choreographer, uh, yes. uh, Brian Herzlinger and, and Christian Vincent, because they, the turnaround on this was not High School Musical. High, you know, High School Musical, we had uh, oh, time. Like, like, <laughs> like at least, at least, two days per <laughs> number at least yeah this we shot i think majority of the final dance routines were shot in one in day. a day yeah one day and the other dance routines everything else that you see was shot in one other day uh so it just just an insane amount of hard work and to top it all off there were things that were implemented that weren't originally in the script uh one being my tap number one 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 number that in in the movie uh that really is such a, a a pivotal story moment that you actually get to really see barrett's love for dance and where his spirit really flies is this tap number that was never in the script was never a part of rehearsals uh until we were like three i think we were like three or four days from getting ready to start shooting and i knew that they were going to do this other tap number and i said to brian like, Brian, you, you know that I tap, right? He goes, wait, what? You it's like, yeah, that's the, I I love tapping. And and he said, we we should implement that. And Christian, freaking in, incredible man that he is, threw together this tap number. And we we worked on this over over the next you know couple of weeks before we had to, had to shoot it and and implemented this number. And and it turns out to be such a a beautiful moment in 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 the movie. Um, just really, really wonderful that that they allowed such such input and and organicness to to, to free flow. Okay, cool. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. And our next question is from Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Hi. Uh, I really enjoyed the movie. I I, I loved watching it. Um, it really made me want to go to the Winterly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Where where was it actually filmed? We shot up in Vancouver. Yes, uh, Toronto. 
Uh, sorry, it's Vancouver, Toronto. Okay. We shot up in Toronto. Sorry, yes. other side of the other side of the country. Uh, we shot up in Toronto um, at the um, the horse- where were we? Hors- like- horseshoe, horseshoe. Uh, That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the name of the the hotel. Okay, great. And uh, what, um, Monique? What was the uh, the thing about it that was the most challenging for you? I think letting it be easy. <laughs> That was the most challenging thing was just allowing it. You know, we live, we're in an industry that can just be so difficult in so many different ways. And this was an experience that like Corbin was speaking of earlier, that was in the midst of a very active world pandemic. We were in the midst of a very intense election in the US and we're storytellers. And we kept reminding ourselves that we got to be the magic makers of the moment. We get to be the light workers. We get to be the ones that are going to be a part of helping people to have the joy that we all deserve when this all is over. And so for me, to be honest, you know, yes, learning the dances was challenging. Like having t- spending two weeks in quarantine and then going from basically zero to hero and having not worked pretty much all year long, having definitely not danced or been in a studio at all. And I actually turned 40. So I was like, I was like, my knees are not, they're not like capable of doing this, which is actually really hilarious because that is something that Lucy talks about as her character, but it's very real for me. Cause I'm like, no, but like, really, like I can't just, you know, jump in like that. But at the end of the day, I, I guess I always knew that this was supposed to be fun and was supposed to bring joy. And if there was anything that I felt like I couldn't do, I knew that I had the support to change that. So, you know, I knew that with Corbin, that I was safe with my partner. I knew that with Christian, he wanted to make sure that we looked good. And Brian is just like all around so incredible that there wasn't really any pressure. There wasn't any extra tension. So, you know, I think, yeah, obviously the most challenging part was like going from not dancing or doing anything and being in a pandemic to going full throttle. But even that, you know, is a blessing and it's a gift. And so I don't even like to look at that as really any more than just like the challenge that comes with being privileged to be able to do something that you love for a living. Well, awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Suzanne. We're going now to our final two questions. Um, Cynthia? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, hi. I'm Cynthia Horner from Right On Magazine and Word Up Magazine. And Corbin, you and (laughs) Romy used to appear in our magazines all the time. Yeah, I know. (laughs) What is it what is it like um now being grown people that really got your start um as teenagers and you continued on with your craft? One of us was a teenager, the other one wasn't. I'll let you guess which one. <laughs> uh, homegirl, you still look fly as hell. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, honestly, uh, I, I, there are just just like life. Uh, there there are aspects that just get better and better, and then there are other parts that you go, "Ooh, that that hurts a lot more." <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I I think that there truly uh, was an appreciation on this film. Um, you know, when, when, when we were working uh, back then, at least I, I, I can speak for myself uh, to say that I, I was just a teenager. And as much as I, I, I really was a hard worker and I was always focused on what I was doing and I appreciated everything that was going on, it, it still was just about enjoying that ride. And, uh, you know, it all happens, it all happened so quickly that there are times you have to you forget to remind yourself, let me really take in this moment. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like I was able to do that a lot more um, working on this project. Just, just yeah. as, as an adult in general, you know, there are those, those times where, where it really is special. I mean, I, one, one thing that I, I would love to talk about, you know, that I, I was able, a moment that I was able to look around and go, wow, this is really beautiful, was, was the representation uh, yeah. in, in this, this film and its, and its diversity. I mean, what's, so beautiful is to see these, you know, 
these lead actors, um, black actors, and the, it, it, that has nothing to do with the driving force of the storyline. The storyline is a romance story. It has nothing to do with, 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 with the fact that, that we're black. And, and yet you get to see all of this diversity and all this representation in there. And I feel like that to me is something that as a kid, I, don't necess I wouldn't necessarily pinpoint uh, as much. Uh, now I see it and I go, I, this, this is something that I, I wish I was able to see a, a lot more of on screen when I was, when I was a kid and, and, and watching you know, all these, these holiday movies. Yeah, that's literally exactly what I was feeling, Corbin, was, was that, 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 is, that that is the biggest shift that has happened since that time. You know, we were just in a different era. And now to be these characters that are not just supporting someone else's story, but to be the story. And um, yeah, it's, it, that, that is def definitely different um, and exciting. Well, thank you so much. And Merry Christmas in advance. Thank you. You Merry too. Merry Christmas in advance to you too, and 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 Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Cynthia. We're gonna wrap with Samantha. Samantha. Yeah. Hi. Um. Thank you both so much for touching on that diversity piece because that's really what I wanted to ask about. I was reading about Monique. You know, just a part of how um, Taylor's like the headband became like a piece was not really having the people that could do black hair. And I'm just curious what your experiences have been through the start of your career to now being in the industry where it's really embracing and prioritizing diversity. Yeah, it's definitely shifted so much. The fact that we can even have this conversation and mm -hmm. be open about it is I think definitely progress. And I think, you know, one thing that, that Corbin and I both do is we are very collaborative in the process. So, you know, we don't take a back seat to, to what we're doing. We really want to be involved every step of the way. And so um, it's been really wonderful to kind of watch the industry sort of catch up and also personally to be able to make stronger and different choices about how I want to be presented and, and so forth. So I feel like there's a lot more room um, and not just diversity amongst like racial diversity, but also diversity within a race. You know, I think oftentimes I have been cast in roles that someone could perceive as like a token role, like, oh, this here we we're filling, we're fulfilling the diversity quota. And, you know, because we're both very safe people. Um, you know, and, and that's not to, it's just what it is. <laughs> and yeah. so, yeah. And, and so, you know, oftentimes we're put in, in this position and it's like, there's so much diversity within being black. Like it's, it's not just, um, okay, we've got someone that's it. And that is something that is so special and beautiful about a Christmas dance reunion is that you just have this family, you've got these people and they just are different shades of, of black. And and there, it's not just sort of one note or one tone. And mm -hmm. that is really um, very exciting to, to see what the possibilities are now that, you know, these other universes are opening up where we can, you know, see ourselves from here. And I, I, I 100% with everything with what Mo just said, and, and, and it's, it's such an important, important thing for, for what she's talking about as far as diversity within you know, within the diversity. I mean, and, and, yeah. and for this movie, by the way, it, 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 we, there's there's representation with with uh, LGBTQIA community. There's, there's yes, there's age in 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 age in in, in differently abled. Uh, yes. We have uh, and our writer, uh, one of our our, our, our co-writing team. You know, Brian Herzlinger, but but majority of the heavy lifting on the writing was uh, Megan Henry Herzlinger. We have a, a female writer. Um, so yeah, right. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, so, so really, I mean, all, all, all that is there. But again, that's what what's so amazing and so important to me about this film uh, is that all of that goes unset. Mm -hmm. We, to to me, you know, for 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 what I grew up watching, this the stuff that I spent, you know, I I grew up watching all all the the MGM classic musicals. Um, and, and never really getting a chance to see, you know, representation, uh, as, of, of myself in, in, in that character. And most of the time growing up, if I was watching someone, uh, of color, then 
it was the token and usually you know the the phrases that were, were coming out of out of that person's mouth or the the kind of demeanor of a certain it always was a very specific uh category or we had to or or they were there because the driving force of their storyline was because they're black it has to do with their struggle it has to do with uh the, the fact that they're not represented and it's you know we we have romance stories too. <laughs> we have yeah. positivity without the struggle as well. Yes. That's oh, that's always there. That struggle is always there because because we we aren't represented in that way. But we will only see that struggle and only see that representation if those are the only stories that we continue to tell. Uh, so that's why it, this really to me was such a a, a beautiful beautiful experience. Um, and really, really important. And I want to see see more of it. And and Mo, Mo and I uh, need to do more of that together. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you both so much for participating today. You know, we all love that you're here and together and reunited. So be sure everyone to tune in to a Christmas dance reunion on Friday, December 3rd at 8, 7 central, only on Lifetime.